Hey guys, Ebon247 Doms here, and today I'm going to be doing OS Overview Episode 4. And in this episode, I'm going to be doing Windows XP. Now, the reason why I'm only doing just one uh, operating system in this one is because uh, this one is a very was a very popular OS back in its time, and it's still kind of a popular OS now. So, um, to start off with it, to tell a little bit about XP, it was basically the next operating system after... Um, Windows 2000 and Millennium and all those and it was uh, redesigned to have more color and all that and it looks nice now still and so starting off after uh, Millennium uh, it was in the uh, builds kind of section or the um, pre-releases and that that was codenamed uh, Whistler, and um, so they kept doing the codename of Whistler for a while, and then they changed it to um, XP in two thousand, in uh, late two thousand or early two thousand one. Uh, XP codename Experience. So um, we have two versions of XP here. We have. Um, we have professional and we have home edition. Home edition logged me in automatically and professional I still gotta log in. So um we'll go ahead and start off with home edition in this so um this is the uh desktop. So you see that it still has the start button uh but it has a new green color and it's got a uh, new background to start off with instead of just having a blue one, just the plain blue color. It's got new icon detail, had new icon details, and a, a new taskbar redesigns, and all that. And the start menu was redesigned as well. So, um, if I can pull up the start menu here. All right, guys. Sorry, I had to uh, do, do something and I had to restart my machine. So, um, so I have my XP mission again here. So resuming where I left off. Uh, if we look at the start menu, it was uh, redesigned a little bit with this blue uh, look here. This is uh, um, new to the Windows. This was Windows new. The sorry. Uh, this is new to the Windows OS at the time of 2001 when it was released, so um, you still have your all programs section here, your accessories, games, and other stuff here, so, and you still have your documents, pictures, music, computer, control panel, and all that stuff, so, um, the, you, if you right click on, pro, um, the desktop background and hit properties. You get your display properties, you get your themes, desktop, um, picture, so you can choose a different uh, desktop picture if you want. So let's say I want this one and I click apply, it will change it to that without changing the theme to it. So um, you can also change your screen saver. And mine's on just the Windows XP right now change your appearance and you can also change your settings but in appearance if you want to change it to the classic style this is what it looked like back in um, uh, 2000 days and stuff uh, you can change colors of color um, scheme of Windows XP so you can change it from blue to olive green and silver as well but in my favorite my favorite is uh, the blue I'd actually prefer blue, but if you were using this theme, you'd probably it would probably switch you to green, like that. So if you apply it, it says please wait, and there you go, it changes it to green, it even changes the start menu to that kind of greenish color. And then you have your display settings, so my screen resolution goes up to 1600 by 1200, even though it's actually a 1366 by 768 display. So moving on after the uh, uh, screen resolution and the set and display properties, uh, this also goes up to 32-bit uh, color quality, as from the uh, highest of like 8-bit or 16-bit back then. So um, you can also do that. You can customize your windows just like this. 
And it actually uh, changes the start menu a little bit, so instead of having like a blue and orange uh, bar, a little strand bar here, it's just orange and it turns to greenish. Kind of goes with the uh, background of this too, so yeah. Um, it includes some applications on here, like uh, Internet Explorer, MSN, uh, Outlook Express, which is an email program. A remote assistance, Windows Media Player, which plays uh, videos, music, and all your stuff. Messenger, which is um, Windows Live Messenger. Uh, Windows Movie Maker, it's an easy to use uh, digital media editor. And Microsoft, I, I know this isn't included in mine. Um, so, um, this the latest version of Internet Explorer on here is Internet Explorer 8. Um, so, I mean, it, some people still even use this on, like, Windows 7 now, or Windows Vista, or anything like that. So, um, it's, it had the search bar over here, but now it just has a complete bar. See, Internet Explorer 8, this is the latest update I have, too, so. Uh, it just gives you a little setup process, and you're done. And, it, and if it does, it might, uh, yeah, it might ask you for an upgrade but you can't upgrade it so um it still loads pages very slick and still displays the page just like uh if you're using like windows 8 windows 7 anything newer than this i mean you can still basically if you really need an operating system like this go ahead and use windows xp support doesn't run out until 2015 now it was going to run out uh, in April of this year, but uh, they extended it since 26% of their Windows revenue or whatever is used of Windows XP. And that's a lot more than Windows 8, and that's like 3% or somewhere around in that 1 to 10 range. Um, so, um, I have... 20 gigs, or not 20, 10 gigs assigned to these virtual machines as of this. Um, moving into the control panel in this. I'm reminding you this is the home edition. If I right click on my computer and hit properties, I'll even show you. Microsoft Windows XP Home Edition version 2002, and this is Service Pack 2, so I do not have Service Pack 3. Um, I haven't updated that, and I've got my computer specs here and it's uh, registration license and everything and this was the one that did require a, a product key um, while professional now you can just install it on a computer without a product key so in the control panel you have your uh, all your settings and accessibilities options and everything so you have apparent appearance and themes network and internet connections atom remove program sound speech and audio devices Performance and maintenance, printers and other hardware, user accounts, date, time, language, and regional options, accessibility options, and security center. So we'll just go through a couple of these, um, starting with uh, network and internet connection. This is basically where you can uh, um, go through your internet options. If you um, so, you can edit all your internet things like your home page, what your search engine should be, uh, how web pages are displayed. Uh, you can do some privacy settings, security settings, uh, connections, and all this. And you can also edit your network connections. So if you click on network connections, it gives you your connections to the internet. So if you click, uh, for example, status, it'll show you what the status is. So it's been going for an hour and 39 minutes and 12 seconds, and it's at 100 megabytes. Per, megabits per second so you can edit all this and stuff if you really uh, need to uh, you also have network setup wizard in here which basically what this is is you can set up uh, uh, your network and all this pretty much so like this you just go through the setup process of creating a network but I'm not going to do that right now actually uh, Windows Firewall, that's basically the firewall program for Windows, so not much needed to go through there if you guys know what a firewall is. You also have Wireless Network Setup Wizard. You can um, uh, 
create a wireless network technically in here so you can just give it a wireless name and like that you can automatically assign a key or password for your network or you can actually pick your own key and you can use a WPA uh, encryption which is stronger than WEP but not all devices are compatible and it's going to need a more secure password so you can do all the settings based in here and um, another one you can do is sound speech and audio devices and what this is basically you can edit your sound um, the volume you, you can see that I do a volume here as a matter of fact you can mute and do all the stuff with your speakers and your device volume and everything you can change your uh, you can change your sounds for when you're playing anything so say you want to edit exit windows you can actually play the current sound and that's the shutdown sound you can change it to anything you want here as well so, and you can change your audio devices um, your what, what plays your voice and uh, you can change your hardware options and all that speech um, basically this is uh, a speech thing that you can do so you can change the voice speed you can um, change what the text would be when you preview the voice so not very much to here and you can change the audio output you can preview the voice so not much here but I just wanted to show you that quick if you ever needed to it, I mean usually your sound would be down here but if you really want to go and change more you could go into here uh, printers and other hardware another one you can edit your uh, what's on what's installed on your computer in Windows XP it's very easy so you can edit your phone and modems and you can you basically just add all your stuff first if you're using a phone connection um, you can edit your keyboard uh, keyboard settings so you can uh, just type a key and all that stuff uh, to test it out you can change your cursor blink rate so if you change it to really fast that's how fast it blinks you can change your character repeat and all that stuff game controllers um, if you're using anything for games uh, your mouse pretty simple pretty basic just a little more kind of like the keyboard basic settings here and change all that you can change pretty much all this. Uh, printers and faxes, this is where if you want to install a printer or change a printer settings or anything, you can change it in Windows XP very easily in the control panel on printers and other hardware. User accounts uh, manages the users on this computer. So as you see, I am the only one on this computer along with the administrative account and you can also turn on a guest account you can also change an account so you could change this one for example um, you can change the guest account you can change any other accounts that are here you can also create a new account uh, so you can add a user to your computer very easily um, you can change the way users log on or log off so you can um, uh, change these settings they're just two little check boxes right here so Use, you definitely want to keep both of these on, but you want to keep use fast user switching on by far because then you can quickly uh, log on back instead of just having to log off. You can just click uh, here and then click log off, and you can click switch user actually after that. So, um, so that's user accounts, um, and that's a little bit of the control panel here. So. Um, otherwise there really isn't that much to show you otherwise there's there's still a command prompt and everything and it's version 5.1 in the NT kind of lineup thing so if I go to uh, net user it shows all the users as you can see I do have the administrator account on this one so that's Windows XP um, a lot of Windows XP and this is the home edition version now I'll just could show you a couple other things about professional now professional is a little bit different uh, of course it's more for work users not usually meant for home but now it might usually actually be meant for a home user now because they can't get a home edition 
unless if you have an older OS like 2000 or anything to upgrade to a uh, XP Home Edition, and you'd have to have a uh, valid product key for this. Um, so if you are connected to a domain or a network server or anything on Windows XP Professional, you get you'd get popped up to this screen, and this is something that Windows XP does a Home Edition does not have because you cannot connect to a domain on Home Edition. So uh, if you click on Control Alt Delete, you can log into any account you want. Um, if you're connected to a domain, you can log on to any account. So if I don't have a pass, yeah, I don't think I have a password on this. So if I don't have a password on this, I can just log in. It'll bring me up to the desktop once again. I guess I still have my recycle bin down here, but um, so it's pretty much just the same thing on here. Not much different. Just that it's more for a work kind of user, and um, you can do some more things, I should say, than um. Uh, XP perfect or home edition, excuse me. Uh, it's got a, a couple more maybe utilities for this, maybe because of the way this system works. Um, so, I mean, I really can't show you very much about this now, just that it has the same, you know, it has the same display properties and everything. So, really, it's just not much different. Um, but more, it's more for a, the, um, work user and as you see this is a professional version 2002 service pack 3 and I am I have my registered license and everything on here uh, I got my computer name and hardware you still have all the same yeah you still have all the same settings on here I mean so um if there's not anything else that I need to say uh that's it technically of the OS overview episode 4 which is uh, Windows XP. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below or message me on YouTube. If you guys have any other questions on any of my other OS overview videos, message me or comment on the videos or anything like that, and I'll respond to them as soon as I can. If you have any suggestions of what OSs I should do next, even though I'll probably be continuing the Windows lineup after this, uh, let me know. Um, I'll probably end up doing uh, Windows Vista 7 and maybe 8 in the video, but I know Vista and 7 will be my next uh, um, Windows uh, OS overview episode, so uh, I'd like to thank you guys for watching again. This was OS overview episode 4 featuring Windows XP. Um, so, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.